Hello friends, I want to spend a little time today looking at textures and a few ideas to kickstart your thoughts on how to use them um, inventively or creatively in your projects. I know a lot of times when you're under the gun and you know there's this big library now of uh, texture resources, uh, sometimes you don't have the time to experiment and look at all the various ways this, these could be applied to your project and there are hundreds or thousands of them so this is not going to be comprehensive but I want to at least kickstart some thoughts or ideas to get you closer to your end zone uh, closer to a product that you can be happy with or feel like you've uh, applied these in a unique way or a creative way that helps your project along um, I have some of these scans. This one is in the Rod Resources folder and in Textures. That's found in Design Elements. I keep adding to the textures that are in the Scans folder uh, and will be keep continuing to scan the ones that we've done in our um, texture painting session. But for the meantime, please make use of these other scans that I have in my own library that um, need to be used and I'd love to um, make them available and encourage you to go hunting through there and get familiar with what's available to you. I'm going to take this first one and just use it as a starter exercise to figure out how to extract this texture from the background onto a transparency layer and then lock that transparency. Um, I was showing this to Kelsey the other day and we've also applied this technique to type in a previous um, exercise or tutorial. We're going to do that same thing now just to get that texture off of the background. I'm going into the channels and I'm not even going to adjust the, the um, um, curves on this one because I just want all those values. Uh, to be um, captured. So I'm going to control click in the channels on this gray channel and now I'm going to invert that selection and that's command shift I because I want the dark areas in this case instead of the light areas. You could go and make another channel. You could copy this channel and invert that and then generate a selection but we're just doing the same thing through key commands. Now I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to promote that to its own layer by jumping or command J. Now we have this kind of looking thing here and I'm going to go to another metal texture and drag this over to this other texture. And this is just to give you, you know, a kickstart, an idea again. Uh, it's coming in really large so what I might do here is convert that to a smart object so that I can scan it at any size and I could decide to scale it back up later and it'll still scale up and it won't lose pixel resolution if I convert it to a smart object first. Now I am basically going to clip I'm gonna move this rust texture to the top layer. Now there is a key command that will get you to mask that top layer to what's underneath it, to the transparency of that layer underneath it. And you do that by holding the Alt key while you hover over the joint between these two layers. So you see that the mouse cursor changes and it turns to this icon which means it's going to, when you click on the joint on the line between these two layers, it's going to make a mask or it's going to mask the top layer by whatever is underneath it. So if we put like a background layer underneath this, you're starting to see the possibilities here. I've taken a texture on the top, I've masked it by what's underneath and you get all those subtle values in between. If this is a white layer underneath, let's just fill that with white and you see how that's affecting that. Now the other way to do this is to bring in simply a selection and the advantage of doing it another way, this way now, is let's say I select this whole graphic here. 
Now I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to undo that what I did before. I want to apply a mask to this layer but this mask um, is something I need to paste into. Well if I go and paste what I had selected before it's going to bring it in as a graphic on top as a layer on top and you're wondering well how can I get that in there well you can't drag it into there you can't paste it into there unless you go into this layer and hold the alt key while you're pressing on this icon and it will actually bring you to the pasteboard of that mask um, of that mask layer mask channel now we can paste in here and we can put this where we want let's say we want it here now when I click back out you'll see that it has masked that now it's the inverse inverse of what I want so I'm going to just gonna click on this layer again and control I or command I and now I've masked that and I've got the inverse of it. So the, the beauty of this is now I could do a curve adjustment. If I say it's too faint through here and I want to bring in, I want to kind of sandwich or bring in the curves of that mask a little bit. And let's say I want to maybe lighten the lightest areas, but I want to really get the darks in there solid. You know, I can start adjusting and playing with and you go back in here and you'll see what we've done. We've kind of flattened those highlights and made it solid white so that the texture is coming through solid in those areas. And that may be what I want to do in this case, but I couldn't do that when I had a transparent layer here because that stuff is just transparent detail. I hope this is all clear. Feel free to ask me in person if you need anything clarified. But those are two different ways to apply masks to other textures or images. Here's yet another one that, let's say, temporarily, I want to try to see what this one looks in the mask or with the texture over top. Well, I can disable this mask by holding the shift key and clicking on it. And that's a temporary disable. And it can just stay there with a red X. And now I can visualize locking that. Let's make that background black. That looks that looks nicer. You see some of that black comes through where those gray values were. And that just looks like a whole different thing. It's gorgeous. Um, so I, I have just uh, disabled that mask channel there. But if I decide I don't want that and I can go back to this, I still have I still have my mask. Uh, I've got to decouple these two layers though to get back to here. Okay, that's one. Um, I want to also bring your attention to a Photoshop file that is in my folder of resources that's called WDM Spill Comp and there are in that file a whole pile of different spill textures that have been scanned and are on separate layers with transparency already selected. So feel free to use that. Now I'm going to try a different experiment here and this is taking any kind of stock silhouette image and let's say how can we use textures to make this more interesting. I have taken the liberty of bringing in a texture here from my library and I'll show you which one it was. It was one of these. So I'm just going to show you the highlight here. I guess you can see. I have to make sure it's in the window. Yeah, we can see these. These just have wonderful splatters and textures and a few light areas, uh, but mostly heavy contrast. And I brought that in and I've just found, a, because they're scanned at such high resolution, you can scale up and zoom right into where you want. Now I'm going to mask that by you doing that same trick of clicking the alt key between the layers and now I've got that texture masked to the silhouette shape and I've taken this other texture from the spill group a 
taken this one and I've put that in there as well in the background and I've brought yet another texture behind that which is one of hmm these are from rod scan textures it's one of these one of, no one of these with a bit of bleeds just kind of a wide area of lots of bleed shapes watercolor bleeds and that kind of gives it a cloudy feel in the background and then I've turned on a color overlay set to linear burn and I've made the, so I've made that dark but before I go there let's just see what we can do with color over top of this now to colorize that texture I've put this over here um, as a top layer and just done really soft airbrush uh, paintings of the of the texture and set it to screen. Now I'm going to clip that to the shape as well. So the texture is clipped to the shape and now also the color painting is, is clipped to the shape. I'll turn this background dark now so we can see how it stands out. So we're starting to build up textures and on top of textures I'm seeing that some areas drop out here um, where the legs are. You may decide you don't like that. Well, the f beauty of this process is that I'm clipping one shape within another so that it's not destructive. It's not committed permanently and I can move this texture around within the shape and find a different crop. You might find interesting kind of graphic appeal of this, of this new way of working with marks and seeing how it how it affects the the overall composition and it has a very painterly now all of a sudden those kind of flat vectors have some life and have a little bit of depth to them I can also decide I would like to bring in some other shapes from this spill group over here to add a little bit of darkness or density where it was getting lost like in the legs perhaps down here so now I'm now I'm adding splatter shapes over top and there because I was selecting that previous layer and I drag this in here it's clipping it still within the same stack now all of these are stuck in the same stack I can make this blend mode different too I could multiply the blend mode or change it to screen or what have you um, but now that that just gives me some detail to help define the feet if I'm losing too much or if I want a different to want to fill in some texture I'm sorry I'm kinda of rambling but I'm thinking as I as I work and that's always tricky so let's do that let's drag another copy down here and do it again so now I have two copies of the same thing um, that's just kind of a rough idea. I hope that gives you some ideas to start with and some things to play with. Um, I don't want to make it too confusing or too fast, but at the same time, I'm sure you're keeping up with a general idea and, and will remember this as you go to a, uh, maybe work on a project and think this would be useful. Then this would just be like a perfect backdrop to do some type or something in that area up there. Or why not even use... Um, Illustrator or Photoshop's own brush tools to let's say just paint this in the background. Let's say this band is called Paul's mm, Brothers. Not sure. interesting so I hope this helps I hope you guys uh, find some um, useful tips and I'd love to see what you guys come up with on your own with your own techniques there's so many things you can do uh, talk to you next time